Picture a city at night. A million points of light tracing the arteries of a metropolis. Now, imagine it all just stops. In a single instant, the lights don't just flicker. They die. Traffic signals go dark, sparking chaos. Communication networks collapse. The familiar hum of civilization is replaced by a deafening, unnerving silence. Your first thought might be a simple power failure, maybe a natural disaster. But what if it wasn't an accident? What if the lights went out everywhere, not because of a storm, but because of a weapon? A weapon you can't see, hear, or feel until it's far too late. This wasn't a traditional explosion. This was an attack, and it represents a terrifying new frontier in modern warfare. Forget what you think you know about bombs. The future of warfare isn't just about massive craters or mushroom clouds. It's about something far more subtle, yet just as devastating. It's about this, a fine, dark dust. A cloud of chemically treated, hyperconductive carbon filaments. This isn't science fiction. This is the reality of the so-called blackout bomb, or more technically, the graphite bomb. It's a non-lethal weapon that doesn't target people, but something else entirely. A country's power grid. Recently, a Chinese state broadcaster unveiled animated footage of their concept for this technology, a weapon capable of causing a complete loss of electricity and signaling a major shift toward a new kind of silent warfare. This is the story of the tech that can shut down a nation without firing a single conventional shot. So, how exactly does a cloud of dust pull off what would otherwise take a massive, coordinated physical assault? The genius of the graphite bomb is in its deceptive simplicity. It's a weapon of pure electrical engineering. Based on the animation released via a CCTV-affiliated channel, China's new system is envisioned as a precise, multi-stage process. It starts with a land-based missile launch. This isn't a city-leveling ICBM, but a delivery vehicle with a very specific job. The missile reportedly has a range of 290 kilometers and carries a 490 kilogram warhead making it perfect for precision strikes against critical infrastructure from a safe distance. But the warhead itself doesn't explode in the way you'd expect. Instead, as it approaches its target, a power substation, a major transmission line, or a grid control center, it deploys its payload. The video shows it releasing around 90 smaller, cylindrical submunitions. These canisters are the real heart of the weapon. In the Chinese design, they're engineered to bounce upon impact before detonating in mid-air. This mid-air detonation is the whole point. The explosion isn't for concussive force, it's for dispersal. Each of the 90 canisters bursts open, releasing a dense, lingering cloud of chemically treated carbon filaments. Think of it as a dark, shimmering fog made of pure conductivity. These filaments are the key. They are incredibly fine, lightweight, and designed to float in the air, spreading over a huge area, reportedly more than 10,000 square meters from a single missile. As this conductive cloud descends, it drapes itself over everything in the target zone. When it blankets high-voltage electrical equipment, the laws of physics simply take over. To get why this carbon dust is so devastating, you have to understand a basic principle of our power grid. High-voltage systems, like the giant transformers and switch yards that manage a nation's electricity, rely on the air around them as an insulator. There are carefully calculated gaps between conductors to stop electricity from arcing, or jumping, where it isn't supposed to. The graphite bomb turns that principle into a weapon. When the cloud of carbon filaments settles onto the equipment, it's like throwing millions of tiny, conductive wires across the entire system. The microscopic filaments bridge the insulating air gaps between high-voltage contacts. Instantly, a massive short circuit occurs. Electricity, always looking for the easiest path, surges uncontrollably through the carbon dust. This creates a catastrophic power spike that can trip safety systems, cause enormous electrical arcs, and even melt or vaporize components. The result is an immediate, widespread failure. The power doesn't just go out for a few blocks, an entire station, and the region it serves, is plunged into darkness. The weapon doesn't need to physically destroy the infrastructure. It just paralyzes it. This is why it's often called a soft bomb. Its effects are massive, but the direct physical damage is minimal. This idea isn't new. The United States military used earlier versions of graphite bombs to great effect. 
During the 1991 Gulf War, the Blue 114B graphite bomb was used against Iraq, disabling about 85% of its electrical supply. In 1999, during the NATO intervention in Kosovo, these weapons were used to black out over 70% of that country's power grid, crippling Serbian radar and communication systems. However, the American Blue 114B often used spools of carbon fiber wire that would unwind and drift down, vaporizing into a conductive cloud upon contact. The new Chinese concept, with its bouncing, air-bursting submunitions, appears to be an evolution of this idea designed for a more controlled and wider dispersal from a single, precise strike. So, what does a weapon like this really mean for modern conflict? Its strategic implications are enormous. In today's world, a nation's military and its civilian society are completely dependent on electricity. A successful attack with a graphite bomb could be a masterstroke for an aggressor. The primary target is what military planners call C4ISR, command, control, communications, computers, intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance. These systems are the digital nervous system of any modern military, and they all run on electricity. By launching a non-kinetic attack that paralyzes the grid, an adversary can effectively blind and deafen an opponent before the first conventional shot is even fired. Air defense systems go offline. Command centers lose contact with troops. Intelligence gathering grinds to a halt. But the effects cascade far beyond the military. A widespread blackout would trigger a systemic, society-wide collapse. Water treatment plants and pumping stations would fail. Hospitals would have to switch to backup generators, with their capacity severely limited. The financial system, which runs on digital transactions, would stop cold. Transportation, from traffic lights to electric trains, would cease to function. The goal isn't just a blackout, it's to induce paralysis and break a nation's will to fight. The damage is profound, but it's also reversible. Once the carbon filaments are cleaned away, a difficult and time-consuming process, power can be restored. But in the critical opening hours or days of a conflict, that downtime is decisive. While power was restored in Serbia in under 24 hours after the first attack, repeated strikes thwarted repair efforts. In other cases, outages have lasted much longer. China's unveiling of this weapon concept, even through a brief animated video, is a significant signal. While officials have been secretive, not revealing the weapon's official name or confirming its operational status, analysts immediately recognized it as a potent tool for non-kinetic warfare. This move aligns perfectly with China's broader military strategy, which emphasizes information dominance and the ability to deny an adversary access to a conflict zone. These are strategies designed to neutralize a technologically superior opponent by targeting their reliance on network systems. Weapons like the graphite bomb, alongside cyber attacks, are central to this doctrine. Much of the online speculation has centered on the weapon's potential use in a conflict over Taiwan. Analysts note that Taiwan's power grid is highly centralized and dependent on imports, with critical choke points that make it vulnerable to precision strikes. A Chinese military journal even published a study suggesting that a strike on just three key substations would have a near certain probability of causing a total blackout in the island's northern region. By using a graphite bomb, an attacker could theoretically disable Taiwan's defenses and command structure without the widespread destruction and civilian casualties that would invite international condemnation. It's a tool for a silent siege, aimed at achieving strategic goals with calculated, almost surgical precision. The graphite bomb represents a profound shift in military thinking. It exists in the gray area between peace and all-out war. It's not an explosive, but it can cripple a nation. It's classified as non-lethal, but its secondary effects on a modern society, on hospitals, water supplies, and public order, can be catastrophic. This technology forces us to rethink what warfare and national security even mean. Our greatest strength, our advanced, interconnected, electrified world, is also one of our greatest vulnerabilities. The weapons of the future may not arrive with a bang, but with a silent, spreading cloud of conductive dust, capable of turning off the lights on an entire country. As nations continue to develop these non-kinetic tools, the line between an attack and a simple infrastructure failure gets blurrier, and the battlefield expands from physical space into the electromagnetic spectrum itself.
The question we're left with is a sobering one. In a world where a nation can be defeated without a single building being destroyed, what does defense truly look like? What do you think is the most effective way to defend against this kind of non-kinetic attack? Share your thoughts in the comments below. And if you found this breakdown insightful, be sure to like and subscribe for more deep dives into the technology that's shaping our world. Thanks for watching.